All right, so you know, graphing polynomial functions. Serious business, but there are methods, there are steps we can take to actually have us kind of go through and systematically figure out what we think, in fact, the function might look like in order to sketch a, a reasonable sense of what the graph might be associated uh, for a polynomial. Let's take a look at this. Is what kind of uh, polynomial equation, polynomial function is this? Well, you'll notice that when I FOIL this out, it's going to be uh, a square term, so it's quadratic, plus when I multiply through by this particular x, I'm going to get a cubic. And what's the leading coefficient? Well, the leading coefficient here is a 1. Leading coefficient here is a 1. When I square it's a 1, 1, 1, I get a, a, an x cubed, but there's a negative sign way out in front. This is a negatively, it has a negative coefficient, which means that its picture is going to look something like one of these. And we don't know which one, though. So let's see if we can actually now find some nice points. First of all, let's find the, um, let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So you plug in 0. I see 0 plus 1 squared, 0 minus 2. And so what do I see? I see this is just a 1. This is a negative 2, negative 2, and a negative sign is just 2. So I see that uh, 0 comma 2 is going to be the, the point that we cross, in fact, the, the y, the y-axis. So the y-intercept is at, is at 2. So that's a point. Let me just now uh, lasso that. What about the x-intercepts? That's where it crosses the x-axis. And happily, we see it's in factored form, so this is going to be really awesome. We see that either this factor is equal to, to 0, which means that uh, x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals negative 1, or this factor equals 0, which means x equals 2. Now, you'll notice that there are only two solutions to what, when I set this equal to 0. Technically, there's always going to be three solutions to any cubic polynomial equation. So there must be an invisible third solution that we haven't found yet. Where is that? Well, actually, if you were to write this out, we'd actually write out negative x plus 2 times x plus 2. I'm sorry, negative x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Namely, I have this appearing twice. So therefore, I'd actually have the invisible solution, which is a repeat of this solution. So in some sense, I have the solution x equals negative 1 with multiplicity 2. That means something weird is going to happen there. What it means is, well, let's see what it means. Something interesting is going to happen. Again, we can now take a look at some axes. Again, you can ask for symmetry questions. Those are always great fun if it's symmetric around the y-axis. If you replace uh, x by negative x, if the thing is the same, it's symmetric around the y-axis. It's like a mirror image. This is not like that, though, so let's move on. All right, if um, x equals 0, y is 2. So if x equals 0, y is 2. We get this point right here. And then we have these, um, these uh, x-intercepts at negative 1 which happens twice, which means nothing in terms of drawing the dot, and also a 2. Now, this is a little weird, because we know we have a negative coefficient, so we know it's going to be one of these. But which one of these is it going to be? This is not at all clear out of these three choices. Huh. It's like a little, little kind of puzzle. So if you're not sure, the best thing to do is just to plot maybe one or two more points just to get a feel of what's going on. Let's, for example, let x equal 1 and see what happens. So if we let x equal 1, what's f of 1? Well, f of 1 will be negative. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 2 squared times, and then if I put in a 1 here, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And so what do I see? I see a 4. Negative and negative is a positive, so this is 4. So I see when... At 1, at 1, we're at 4. So we're way up here like this. Does that give us a, a better clue? Well, it certainly tells me that what's going to happen here is this must be the upward swing, and this must be the, the, the down swing here, right? So, so maybe what we should do is figure out, you know, wh where, where, you know, where's that turning point thing? Well, let's take a look at uh, negative 2. So what's f of negative 2? That's going to be negative times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is what? It's negative 1 squared times, and negative 2 minus 2 is actually negative 4. Well, negative 1 squared is going to be 1, and negative and negative is a positive. So this actually is 4 again. That's kind of amazing. So here we bounce, and we're at 4. And it turns out in this example, 
This is going to be the low point. So the two points that we see here with multiplicity 2 actually come from this configuration. So in some sense, the graph comes down and just kisses the, the x-axis. And that turn is why we get two solutions. And you can see this for yourself, because what if I just jiggle the x-axis? Boop! See, automatically we see now the two solutions. But kind of in this limiting case, the two solutions become one solution. And so there's one solution here and one solution here. This is the upswing. That's the part we're seeing here. This part here is this part. And so all of a sudden I can draw a wonderful picture of this, and it looks like this. Come down, come down nice and steep. Come way down, grab that point, bloop, and then make a quick turn, turning point. It's a minimum. Climb back up. I don't exactly know where the max is. Might be at uh, one, but it might not be. And then come on back down. And notice that has that general form of a cubic that has a negative coefficient. And we have a rough sketch of this. So you can produce these rough sketch. Absolutely neat. Now, you might say, well, I don't exactly know where that highest point is. And, and I don't exactly know how this, you know, the curvature of all this stuff goes. And how would I find that? Well, it turns out by, by plotting points, we can't exactly guarantee exactly where all those little nuanced elements are. Now, if you have software, you can go on a, a computer, and they can actually produce these really, really beautiful pictures. But knowing for sure that that software is correct actually is, is something that's a little tricky. And you want to know what the answer is? The answer is the techniques of calculus. It's in calculus where we'll finally see why these curves curve the way they do and where that curvature really is. Those peaks and those valleys can be found exactly using the ideas of calculus. But for now, we can celebrate the fact that by solving you know, the equation in terms of finding the, the, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, looking for symmetry, uh, plotting a few points, and, and thinking about what's happening as you go off the horizon, whether it's going like this or like this for, for cubics, for example, we can actually get a very good rough sense of how these graphs look. Congratulations on thinking about these, these wonderful graphs. Have fun thinking about them. Lots of steps involved, but you absolutely can do it. I know it. I'll see you soon.